Toshiba E305 hard drive replacement. It's an E305-1990X, I believe. And it's got an i5 quad-core processor, Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit, 8 gigs, or no, 4 gigs of uh, DDR3 uh, RAM. Uh, it's got a 500 gig, 7200 RPM hard drive. There I am. Um, Blu-ray, USB 3.0, HD uh, screen. It's got a webcam, uh, HDMI port, backlit keyboard. This is a metallic um, magnesium body and a mag metallic and magnesium uh, lid and also a base. And uh, keyboard removal regarding keyboard removal first and uh, chassis removal you have to remove all the screws here 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 once you remove all those also taking the key uh, the battery out is important so it's a e305 s 1990x um, high-end they call it like a blue line special or something at uh, Best Buy in 2011. That was winter 2011. So once I remove all those screws I can pull the keyboard and I've done this already just to be able to hold my phone and uh, remove the keyboard. Anyway there's a couple of ribbon cables you have to remove there. Okay. Set the keyboard in a place where it's not going to get damaged. Also you have to remove a couple screws here from the chassis. Remove these plastic uh, ribbon cables here from the mother from the chassis and the motherboard and you can pull this up and I've already done this and it uh, and it basically it unsnaps set this aside somewhere where it's not going to get damaged so there is the hard drive so the hard drive is removed by one two screws once you remove those screws, it's a little chassis, you can pull that up and then slide it out. Actually, removing the DVD tray works better because you have to slide it this way and there's really no room for margin. So I'll come back to you on that. I will be replacing it with an SSD hard drive, which is in that bag right there. A 128 gig Micron brand um, SSD drive and it's from 2012. It's brand new in the pack. It is, um, yeah, Micron, and it's, uh, let's see what model it is. It's a uh, real SSD C400, 2.5 inch, 128 gig, 6 gigabit per second. Um, it is from 2012. It's from Singapore. So there we go. We'll be putting that in momentarily, and I'll come back to you. Once you remove the screw, from this here you can slide out the blu-ray player it's a blu-ray player dvd cd burner not a bad device it's too bad it wasn't a blu-ray burner but those are significantly more expensive than just a blu-ray reader dvd burner so slide that out you don't have to pull it out all the way and then you can remove the screws from the hard drive and i'll do that momentarily once you remove the two screws from here and uh, over here, you can just basically use this plastic tab to pull your drive, kind of wiggle it, and then pull it up. And you can see there's foam underneath it, and there's the drive itself. It's a Toshiba, 500 gig. Uh, I believe it's 5400 RPM, but it could be 7200 RPM. The original drive that came with this laptop was actually a Seagate, and it was a 7200 RPM, 500 gig drive. So I'm assuming Toshiba probably put a 5400 gig drive in. I'm not sure. I haven't Googled the model number yet, but um, I just recently had the drive replaced. I actually recently had the whole motherboard, the processor, the RAM replaced, as well as a keyboard. Um, I had eight gigabytes of PNY RAM in there, and I bought it used on Craigslist from the Portland, Oregon area. And um, unfortunately, I mean, it worked for several months, but then unfortunately it started exhibiting errors, and it took out the motherboard somehow. The RAM took out the motherboard, and it caused all sorts of problems. It was randomly shutting down, doing all kinds of weird things. 
And so I called Toshiba, it's still in their warranty till 2014, and they said, bring, send it in. So they, they, they actually sent me a box, and then I had to pay for shipping, which was about 25 bucks. Um, and they require a specific type of shipping. So I paid that out of my pocket, but the uh, it's sort of like a copay on the insurance plan that I got. I sent it in, and they uh, replaced, like I said, the motherboard, the processor, the RAM, and before that, several months before that, they replaced the hard drive, um, because the hard drive, the other drive I had, I actually, yeah, I dropped it. <laughs> I took it out, put a 240-gig SSD drive in, and used it for several months, took out the SSD drive, and was getting ready to put the 500-gig back in, and dropped it. So, you got to be careful when you're uh, messing with your hard drives, moving your hard hardware around, you don't drop stuff. Anyway, it was under warranty and I called Toshiba and they replaced it. So basically, uh, all in all, I have a brand new laptop, brand new keyboard, uh, brand new motherboard, processor, RAM, hard drive. Not a bad deal for um, an $1,189 laptop that sold new in December of 2011. Um, and I actually bought it used on Craigslist about about a year ago, well, a year and a half, a year ago, uh, for 380 bucks. So, um, uh, don't tell Toshiba that. <laughs> anyway, I'll get back to you. I'm going to put the SSD drive in shortly. So, um, this drive, this Micron drive, um, very nice drive, super thin, super thin drive. It's, it's a good sixteenth of an inch thinner than standard SSD drives. Uh, they're going for kind of a thinner profile lately. Anyway, um, I think they'll probably even get get thinner as time goes by. But uh, and this is a super light light hard drive. Uh, hard drive. It's about ten grams. So you're you're adding, you know, what's a pound is sixteen ounces, and this this is only ten grams. So uh, that that's really light, really really light. And the performance increase for this laptop is going to be amazing. Of course, I'm going to have to reinstall Windows. And I do have reinstalled disks, and I'll have to download some drivers from Toshiba. Actually, what I like to do is copy the profile from this 500 gig drive over to the um, new SSD drive. I copy the entire profile, the user profile, my profile, and that includes system files. And um, in that in that profile capture that I pull over to the new operating system that's going to be on this Micron drive. Um, reside some drivers and I'll have all the drivers basically installed automatically when I drag them over to the computer. There's a few of them that you have to manually install. Um, wireless, I think. There's some keyboard shortcuts. Uh, the DVD button on the on the function um, side of the keyboard up on top there's a DVD dr uh, release or eject button that that you have to install drivers for specifically from the website um, but anyway other than that this is a pretty easy swap out now you notice there's no there was no RAM um, compartment door on the bottom of the laptop that's kind of um, because of the high-end nature of the laptop, they're going for kind of like a MacBook type effect. But there, there are no ports on the bottom of this for RAM. That port right there is for your wireless adapter card and to unscrew the keyboard. There's, I think, one one screw or two screws that keep the keyboard in place. So you'll notice there's no no RAM compartment side on this side either. You can't get to the RAM from this side. So literally, you have to remove about 20 screws little black screws, maybe 15, from the motherboard. Um, take out the motherboard completely from the chassis, and the RAM uh, resides on the other side of the motherboard. I believe either here or here. I think they're here. Um, really, really ridiculous that Toshiba did this. Um, I love this laptop. I absolutely love this Toshiba laptop. I'm an Asus guy. I really like Asus, but Toshiba does build some nice stuff. Um, this is one of their nicest ones that I've had. Uh, Spec-wise, yeah, there's other ones that are a little better, you know, with the 1080p screens and some other other uh, added features. And this one does lack, you know, the USB 3.0. Uh, it does have a USB 3.0 port here, only one though, out of the three ports that, that this system has for USB. You'd think that they would have done at least two USB 3.0, but they didn't. Um, they just included one port. So, and the bus speed is fine. 
on, on that data transfer from like a thumb, I have a thumb drive that's USB 3.0 that works real well. Anyway, uh, to the installation of the um, SSD hard drive, I got to unscrew the, the little uh, aluminum chassis right there on the back of the on the back of the other uh, 500 gig I'm gonna put it on this one and then install it and I'll show you that in a minute so I noticed that because of the thickness of the drive the thinness of the drive compared to the thickness of the stock um, Toshiba drive you'll be able to see the difference between the two right here uh, let's see yeah they're they're pretty thin as you can tell um, the SSD drive is about one-third thinner um, and so the chassis that holds the drive in place that gets screwed to the um, the the mother or the chassis of the laptop you'll notice there's a space there okay so what I did was I took a static bag and I cut part of it folded it up real tight and then put it in here and that is absolutely not going to hurt the drive in any way it's not going to hurt the laptop in any way um, nothing is going to be damaged by that at all. It's actually a static plastic type bag. It's a it's designed for um, a motherboard. So folding it up, putting it right there is absolutely fine. Okay. And you'll notice that um, sliding in the uh, drive to the motherboard connection is absolutely easy. You just slide it in and nice and tight. So you have to remember to put your uh, screw back in the holder. It's, it's basically kind of like a little safety holder thing for the DVD tray. Okay, so the screws for the hard drive are back in place. The screw for the DVD drive is back in place. Now to put the chassis uh, palm rest keyboard holder back in place. I'll be right back. So the chassis actually just, it sits back in place. It doesn't even really snap. There's no snaps to hold it in place or anything. So remember to put your little plastic um, ribbon cables, slide them carefully back into position. And remember to um, get them snug and then push down the little keeper. It's like a little plastic keeper there. Grab the motherboard one. Put that one back in place. Oh, that came off. That's nice. Okay, and then that goes back down. Okay, and then we have this one. It's for the power button, of course. And if you were to break any of these cables, they are available on eBay. They're about eight bucks a piece or something like that. Not really bad, but you'd be down. Your your system would be down for. Uh, indeterminate amount of time of course now the keyboard uh, takes a little bit more finesse so I'm gonna have to put the phone down I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Note 2 to record this uh, video in HD okay there you go I'll be right back with the keyboard installment so that's the underside of the keyboard there and uh, those ribbon cables slide into position that one slides in um, with kind of a pressure and then that one actually slides into a little tray and then you have to flip down that black strip right there and it, it kind of it holds the um, keyboard cable into place. I'd like to see manufacturers go to a um, zero force um, keyboard um, installation where literally you put the keyboard in this tray down in this and it sits with like metal tabs copper tabs somewhere on the bottom side of the keyboard and copper tabs somewhere on the motherboard that are kind of upraised that can be touching and uh, so there's you eliminate the need for cabling um, that's kind of what I'd like to see manufacturers go to oh and you also have to put your screws back in to the chassis don't don't forget that I'm gonna have to do that right now all the screws but here comes the fun part all those screws that are on top of that pile of magnets have to go back in the system and all these little holes right here all the way around the system so I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back okay the system is uh, back together now I'm gonna go ahead and I put the battery back in fire it up it 
should have powered on when I opened the lid, but let's go ahead and go to BIOS. I think it's F2. Uh, let's see. Check cable connection. Hmm. It's saying that I need to check a cable connection, so I might have... Uh, not connected a cable correctly. I'm gonna have to go back and do that. Double check everything, make sure it works. Every once in a while that happens. Check cable connection. Okay, I'll be back to you.